Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. And of course, it is also Marine Week. And we take a look at our oceans and raised awareness around them. And I think one of the most precious but at-risk creatures of our seas undoubtedly at the moment have to be our whales. But one organization is doing everything they can to fight for their survival, even putting their own lives at risk in the war on whaling. For years, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society has been engaged in a relentless war against whaling and the countries that perpetrate it. But with a philosophy of direct action, the war on these whaling ships has been fraught with conflict. This is a nonviolent movement, but unfortunately, uh, as every nonviolent movement in history has shown, that uh, that is usually one-sided, that the nonviolent side usually gets attacked violently. That harpoons fired uh, over us, uh, our ships have been rammed, we've been shot at, we've been uh, attacked by mobs, we've been beaten. As with any war, the situation has gotten ugly more than once. Employing a confrontational approach to protect our ocean's marine life, the crew on the front line of the Sea Shepherd movement put their lives at risk on a daily basis to disable or deter whaling vessels from being able to shoot their harpoons. It's a campaign not for the faint-hearted. Because of their bravery, Sea Shepherd's actions have saved the lives of over 5,000 whales and their efforts have finally resulted in a landmark judgment that protects our whales from illegal poaching in Antarctica. For 12 years, Sea Shepherd has been intervening against the illegal operations of the Japanese whaling fleet in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary. And for 12 years, the Japanese have been calling us outlaws and pirates and eco-terrorists for trying to stop them from killing whales. What the International Court of Justice in The Hague has uh, ruled is that it is the Japanese fleet that is illegal and so the tables have been completely turned. While a victory for whale conservationists across the world, the fight to protect our whales does not end here. The Sea Shepherd plans to continue guarding these creatures of the deep, whatever the cost. Five thousand whales. What a number to shout out on Marine Week now with us. Via Skype, live from Paris, we're joined by the founder of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson. A very good morning, Paul. It is inspiring to hear what you and your team have achieved. But I have to ask, what is the status of the Japanese whaling fleets right now? Have they resumed any whaling operations? There was no whaling in the uh, Southern Ocean this year. There may not be again next year. Japan hasn't indicated whether they will or will not return. We think that if they do return, they might be just trying to save face. But if they do, they'll be going back in blatant violation of the International Court of Justice, which ruled that their whaling was illegal in the Southern Ocean. So we're going to see exactly what the world's governments do if they do return to the Southern Ocean. Meanwhile, uh, we're building um, our first ever custom-made vessel. It's a fast, long-range patrol boat, and that'll be in uh, an excellent position in uh, 2016 to return to patrol the Southern Ocean. Oh, that is fantastic news, hopefully a sign of the times. But of course, it's not just our whales that we have to worry about at this stage. What are some of your other major priorities with regards to our oceans and the work you do? Well, our concern is for uh, the destruction of biodiversity in our oceans, everything from plankton to the great whales. You know, since 1950, we lost 40% of our plankton population, and that provides 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. And nobody really addresses that, uh, that problem very much. Uh, you know, the climate change conference is coming up here in Paris in a month and a half. And that's one of the things we're trying to focus on, uh, is that if we're going to address climate change, the best way to do it is to uh, protect our oceans. Uh, biodiversity in the ocean is the life support system of the planet. And it's easy to do. We just leave them alone. Let the fish come back. Let the whales come back. If we don't, and if the oceans die, well, then we die. We don't survive on this planet with a dead ocean. Well, maybe not going to the extent that you and your team are. I think most of us are very deeply concerned about our oceans, but we feel powerless to do anything about it. Can the average person really make a difference? Well, we're actually proving that the average person can because uh, all the volunteers in Sea Shepherd are average people. You know, the only thing that's ever changed anything in history has been the... Uh, 
the, the passion of, of individuals. Every single social movement has come about because of individuals, not because of governments, not because of corporations. You know, whether it be the anti-slavery movement, the anti-apartheid movement, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, it was all led by passionate individuals. Uh, it's people who make a difference, not, not governments. Uh, well, you are a person making a massive difference. Your passion is contagious. To Captain Paul Watson and your team, thank you so much. We look forward to getting another update from you guys soon. Let's hope that the current status of whaling stays as it is. Now, of course, if you were on the M1 yesterday, you might have gotten a major shock. It has been all over social media. Let's now get the details of what exactly happened, Cat.